Lawton. Hello, friends, and Lawton, to talking with famous people. Mm. My name's Hope Derek. My beloved Rachel is here beside me, clad in a talking with famous people shirt, representing, as they say. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm looking suave and debonair in my yes, dark colored overshirt. Today, I'm here to read and respond to your chats as usual. But this time, it's explicitly the purpose of this live stream. Ooh, Much for the title. I like that. Yeah. Would you like anything from the fridge? I would love a Uncrustable, please. Ooh. Thank you. Hello, greetings, wisdom. Are you wise about greetings or do you are you are you saying that to a, to wisdom which is currently arriving? It is of course the natural question to ask. If you have greetings wisdom, what does that look like? Is it knowing when to use aloha, when to use sayonara, when to use sup, when to use hey girl? Is that greetings wisdom? Possibly. Hello, Winston's mom. I'm here to read aloud your chats and respond to them, whomever you may be. That's my duty and job here tonight, according to the title of this live stream anyway. And you know how, you know, doggedly I obey title <laughs> constraints. Mm -hmm. So... You're sure to get exactly what the title says here on Talking With Fantasy Consider yourself Consistency is key. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> hey, Winston's mom. Of course, in the absence of any chats to read and respond to, if I were to really be faithful to this particular model, I'd just sit silently. But instead, I'll just say some words until something pops up. Um, my name's host Eric. I'm a person who has a YouTube channel. What's it about, people sometimes ask me. Well, it's about cognitive function, sort of, but mostly it's about being a friend. I was gonna say friendship. Mm -hmm. Mostly it's about friendship. Being a Chats from the SFPs. This will be fun. I wanted to ask you to tell us more about these types. Good question. I chose the name Greetings Wisdom to imply that I accept new perspectives. I accept the wisdom of others. So it's hello to incoming wisdoms. Okay, cool. Thank you, Wisdom's mom. Good evening, Zealand Black. I would suggest on a punctuation. Here's, here's, a, here's some wisdom incoming greetings. Wisdom. <laughs> From a punctuation perspective, it technically your name means you're wise about greetings. You need a comma after greetings if you were addressing greeting, if yeah. you were addressing wisdom, right? True. So good point. But but I get that you're you're choosing to play to include punctuation among your playthings, and that's fine. Who am I to judge you for that? You know, if you want to include punctuation among your playthings, go right ahead. So let's see. Winston's mom says, hi, Rachel Apolosa, looking cute tonight. Thank you, Winston's mom. Zaylin Black says, good evening. Winston's mom replies, good evening, Zaylin Black. Always nice to see a sane person arrive. Lol. Zaylin Black says, lol, who says I'm sane? Smiley face. <laughs> My goal is to read aloud. Every non-inappropriate, so any, any legitimate chat that gets typed into here, I will read it aloud and respond to it in some way, shape, or form. Greetings Wisdom says, interesting. I'll think about it. Good idea. Oh, Winston's mom says, lols for everyone. Who wants a red lol? Mm, I don't like red ones. I believe that that color dye gives you cancer. Oh, no. 
just learned how to overlock overclock my graphics card and installed a prior BIOS due to a random green screen due to random green screen crashes. Really? So um, I don't know what install the prior BIOS means, but I do know what overclocking your graphics card means. It means you um, it means you make it colder, right? And that then it works better, works faster. I'll take a tart, lol. A tart. By tart, do you mean a British young lady who is uh, being pursued by somebody in a in a romantic or sexual fashion? You can undervolt it to make it cooler. Undervolting it means you give it less electricity than it naturally takes, but it still works just as well, but it heats up less. Is that what that means? The utter in his name is a verb, says utter self. I command utter self. Well, then again, you'd need a comma. Okay. I think yours is really a pun. Pop goes the tart or the weasel. A tart lolly. I knew your mind would go to the Brits, though. Well, they are fond of the term tart and snog. They snog tarts in Britain. Hello, Wonder Kitty. Rachel, my darling. Yes? Would you mind terribly closing the door? Not at all. Do you agree that Sherman from Greek psychology is an INFP? I'm assuming you mean geek psychology, unless there's a Greek psychology channel that uh, that I'm unfamiliar with. Of course, your brackets render all punctuation rules null and void within the brackets of yourself. So uh, you may have a, you may have that argument at your disposal. Uh, I don't know who that is, actually, Sherman from Geek okay. Psychology. I Are you going now? I'm familiar with the channel name. You want me to go out with you? But I don't think I've ever really uh, she doesn't want to go out. She's just playing. Oh, she's just playing? She's just playing. Watch me make mommy open the door. <laughs> oh, B and B. You have nine gigs for you out of two hundred and thirty seven. You don't need to upgrade your PC, you need to delete large files. He only needs a comma if it's a command to himself. If it's just a general command, it's grammatically correct, but it's it's semantically nonsensical. Right? So correct. If if it's if it's a general command, it's punctuationally correct, but it's semantically nonsensical. Then you'd have to have quotes around it. You'd have to have quotes around it though. But you know what? <laughs> I like unnecessary commas and frequently where I'm not supposed to be. <laughs> Why don't you type police anymore? Um, uh, I used Those questions are hard to answer. I why don't I? There's so many possible things I could do that would probably be a better use of my time than live streaming. Um, but live streaming is play, and those other works are sometimes works, and I tend to avoid work sometimes. And. Uh, Yeah, I know. I know. I, I should make more. Yes. I don't really care about making other people happy. I, as much as I do about about having them like me. It's a little bit different. And just, you know. Oh. I, I know you and a lot of people, Valerie Alwood. You and a lot of people are 
are saying, Eric, you know, the reason I came around here in the first place and I found out about you and subscribed to you was type police and you almost never do them. And what, what's up with that? Because this is not really a so much per se a YouTube channel as most YouTube channels are, as it is a, um, it's just a part of my life, you know? Well, it's a challenging FE move because, like, I either have to be FE constructed, very FE constructed and careful, um, but or I can be a little bit brutal, right? I don't like hurting people's feelings. And there's the type police was fun to do when I had a big list of big name people in front of me to the type police. It is not fun type policing um, little people. It can be it can be fine if I agree with them about their type because then it's a way of making a friend. But if I don't agree with about them with them about their type, then it's just me bullying them, right? Yeah. Who wants to be that guy? All right. And Katie, you are probably fucking kidding me. <laughs> you made her make a decision. That's good. <laughs> that cat. She wants to just go in and out the door over and over again. Yeah, she's gonna be scratching soon. She forgets like she forgets it. She wants to go inside the house. Mm -hmm. But she's gotta realize mommy and daddy aren't here right now. If she wants you to go walk over there, yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I frequently will do that. So do I. I do it we, all the time. We are I'm that good. cat's bitch. <laughs> Both of us. We really are. <laughs> for cats to do. Fear of injury in rooms is a common cat problem. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> we can't do the kitty door thing ourselves because, and yes, we've considered this. <laughs> Thought this through plenty. Yeah, we have. The problem is, there are two other cats who come around here sometimes. Yeah. And Trouble is appropriately named Trouble. When we leave the door cracked or open for the cat, Trouble comes in here. Even if we just leave it open for a little while, sometimes we'll come back and we'll go, oh, fuck, because it smells like cat semen in the house now. <laughs> God. That's like oh, trouble. Yep, and he does. It happens. We're we're nice to you. We like you. We think you're a good guy. Do you need to squirt cat semen all over our house? <laughs> For reals. You think you will live stream tomorrow night for New Year's Eve? Tomorrow's mm -hmm. New Year's Eve. Mm-hmm. What are you people doing for uh, New Year's Eve? Anyone got plans? Uh, I asked Eric to be my New Year's Eve kiss. Okay, so Zaylin Black, I thought about this as well. Zaylin Black says, what if you have a cat collar with a command strip? The door will only open for the cat wearing it. My cat does not want to wear a collar. Oh, she would go berserk. She doesn't like collars. You already tried it? I don't like calling. No, I just have decided for her that she doesn't. <laughs> I've never tried it, actually. <laughs> I've never tried putting a collar on her. <laughs> but no, but Kimberly tried putting a collar on her. And she oh, didn't like oh. it. Oh. I can't. She's so wild. I think of PP as a wild, a wild one. You know, she's a free spirit. All right, Valerie Alwood. I'll tell you what. I'm going to... Uh, Like Xeno Warrior Princess combined with like Marie Antoinette. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. If I get my prescription tomorrow, I mean the pharmacy hasn't checked to me yet. But if I do, then I will if I get it early enough in the day anyway, then I will um 
prep out a list of people to type police, and we'll do a live New Year's Eve type police succession. We'll have an agenda and a schedule of people we're going to cover. That's a wonderful idea. Thanks. Yeah. And I think it'll make people happy. I'll have to just do a little bit of prep, prep work in advance, but that's fine. So that's, if, if I get my prescription tomorrow, I will do that for New Year's Eve, for sure. Okay? If I don't get my... And I should get it tomorrow because it's it's the right time. The only reason I wouldn't get it is if the pharmacy has to order it or something. But usually then they send me a text saying they have to order it. I just haven't gotten a text at all yet. Yeah. I actually haven't checked my phone in a while. I may have gotten a text back. You might have. Chad W. says... I think it's an excellent idea to have plenty of dry food, water, and a way to heat it just in case. I didn't get my speed. If I don't do that tomorrow, it means I didn't get my speed. So that's basically as much of a promise as you'll ever get out of me. If I get my speed, I'll do that tomorrow. Because I like the idea. I think it sounds fun. It's about, it's well past time for me to, you know, buck up, stop just constantly indulging myself and do a little bit of work in addition to just playing. So, um, I'm I'm committed to the idea. I think it sounds fun, and I'll still be committed to it tomorrow. Uh, but if I don't have any speed tomorrow, then I'll be tired by tomorrow night, and I'll just go to sleep. Can I? Um, I'll probably partake of that in the festivities since it's been sure. Annoying. Of course, yeah. Thanks, Valerie Alwood. Uh, it is definitely this song oh, that I have gotten more positive response for than any other song I've made, even though it was just, uh, I just tossed it out real quick as a jingle. Um, it's my most successful musical composition ever, so I do appreciate that. Chad W. says, the clock's ticking. I don't see things improving in 21. Well, it's interesting, Chad W., um, I'm not sure about about where we're headed. I, I feel uncertain about 21 and how things are going to play out. I also actually have kind of mixed feelings about um, I have mixed feelings about 2020. I I don't feel as though 2020 was terrible for me or Rachel. Mm -hmm. I do want to take shrooms tomorrow night, but I probably won't because. Uh, I could probably get them. I just got a call to Lila. <laughs> I've never taken shrooms before. I mean, we could try to get them along if you want. Up to you. Well, last time I got them through Delilah, though, I, I was pretty disappointed with her connect because they looked good and everything, but they were really weak mushrooms. Like, they, they were real mushrooms, but... Uh, I had to eat like almost uh, uh, over an eighth or more. Wow. Even normally, I just have to eat half of an eighth. Splitting an eighth of mushrooms is a good high for me, but uh, those mushrooms that I got from through the last time, last time were weak. So anyway, um, I okay. do like mushrooms a lot. I think Rachel probably like mushrooms. I would. I want to try. I trust host Eric, so I would definitely do shrooms with him. I've heard good things. Like it, I've the good things I've heard were from people who were like in groups of friends that they were like really trusted, and then they would take shrooms and they would like trip balls and like like see cartoons and stuff like. I don't know. Like they said, it it, was, it was an elevated sort of thing, not like a downer. Right. Well, they always make me laugh a whole shit ton. Oh, well, that's good. A two point five gram dose is the clean ski. That seems like about the right amount, really. It's a little more than half an eighth. It's you know two thirds of an eighth. They don't taste good. That's true. The thing is, Rachel does have an actual mental illness. So what's interesting oh. here is. I have two thoughts on that. One, that may, I don't know what, uh, how mushrooms is going to interact with that. But two, I've heard that, uh, that 
mushrooms have been used to treat that sort of thing before too. Yeah. So I'm not really, I'm not really sure. Like I have some reservations about, about Rachel taking um, mushrooms. Well, she has actual bipolar. I really mania. do. Like yeah. she, she's, she's, I've been with her while she's had a psychotic break before. Yeah. If your prescription is an SSRI, they won't work. Oh, mushrooms don't work if you're on an SSRI. I think she is on an SSRI. She's on uh, Prozac. Is that uh-huh. an SSRI? Is that? I don't know. Why is it? What's the extra oh, yeah. S for? Antidepressants and mood staplers dilute the high? Huh. Uh, well, you know, honestly, I would rather, if it comes down to it, I'd rather, like, spend the money on weed than some good weed right well yeah. the thing is um we also have amphetamines you know oh yeah i don't really so the weed and the amphetamines are good enough for me at, at this point right now right and, and then, mushrooms well, i'll a, try eventually you know well like, here's a good mix for new year's eve okay well we have plenty of weed we'll take some amphetamines and then we'll We'll each take uh, a clone pen as well. That sounds like exactly the <laughs> recipe. That that sounds like a great recipe, right? Doesn't that sound like a good New Year's Eve? I'm not talking about meth, no. I'm talking about um, Adderall because I get a prescription for it. It's actually not different than speed, fancy deluxe. <laughs> it's just speed. It's just that it's yeah. like if you were to take math in the in the proper dosages and by eating it, it would in fact be just like Adderall, basically. The only difference is between methamphetamine and regular amphetamine is that methamphetamine is methylated. It's not minus the up energy. It just depends on how much you take. The reason meth gets you so squeaked out primarily is because you smoke it and you you smoke too much of it. I mean, I, I was a meth addict for years. I was a meth addict for like four years or something. Meth made you puke and then fall asleep? Probably wasn't meth. Um... You read an entire novel in one sitting after snoring and riddling. You already knew, Eric. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Adderall just makes you feel normal. You aren't taking enough of it, Valerie. <laughs> if, it just make, if it just makes you feel normal, yeah, you definitely aren't taking, taking enough of it. Yeah. Uh, my first time that I ever took Adderall, like, I was in college and I stayed up. Like, I felt it right away, so, and I stayed up and I did a, I had a, actually, I was supposed to get, I was, like, quick on getting information for this, like, thing I was writing about gorillas, and then I went back to my apartment and just, like, was, like, on AIM and, like, research, I think that might have even been the same night that I found out I was a rat for, uh, in Chinese astrology, I was just like deep diving into uh, social media. I can sleep on Adderall and Vyvanse too. Well, I don't know about Vyvanse. I've only taken Vyvanse once. I liked it, but I it's hard. It was hard for me to distinguish it because I also was on Adderall. So, um, but yeah, I can sleep on Adderall too. In fact, a lot of time when I first go on it after a sleepy week. I take pills and it makes me sleepy at first. And then and then it kicks in, you know? Five ant sucks by itself? Probably. <laughs> that reminds me of this one time in um Laverne, just a couple years ago, when I got the one time in my life really that I got really good cocaine. Well, I'm pretty sure there was some meth mixed into it. <laughs> mm. 
And that's why it was such good cocaine. Because <laughs> I'm like, wow, this cocaine's lasting for hours. It's just like, wow. Well, Eric, probably, probably there was a little bit of speed. Cut. Yeah. It definitely was coke. Made my face all numb and everything. Mm. But it was, you know, it lasted way too long to just be coke. Booba is nice. What's booba? Yeah, what is booba? You take Pro Vigil. That's that. That stuff makes me um, makes me like irritated mostly. For that uh, yeah, I've had a lot of dental work done. Modafinil. That's what it's called. Yeah, it makes me irritated. I haven't done that much cocaine, like. When I say I did it a couple of years ago, I did, but that was the first time I'd done it in decades, probably, you know? I've only done cocaine once, and I hated it. Viagra LSD combo with the MA? What's the MA? Modafinil? Is hash legal? Yeah. I mean, weed hash? Yeah. We got some just the other day. At herbarium, if I remember correctly. Yep, we, it was we decided to get some concentrate and they had hash. And I was like, hey, let's get some hash. Mm -hmm. Hash is like one of the only weed products that has its own distinct taste to it. It tastes like hash. I'm not sure what it is that makes hash different than um, like other kinds of concentrate, but. That was my first time having hash. Hash tastes like hash. Back in college, I smoked a fair amount of hash. Because um, I knew somebody who who had a fair amount of it, you know. Hmm. How is the price compared to when it was legal? Considerably cheaper, but not, but less than less than fifty percent cheaper. So. Mescaline. I've never done mescaline, as far as I know. I've never done any mescaline. One time, I uh, supposedly smoked opium that somebody put on top of a, a bowl of weed, but if it didn't seem to do anything, so I don't know if it was really opium or not. Kitty, you've got to be kidding me. I'm <laughs> oh, daddy's not too happy, PNP. You are a spoiled, rotten kitty. <laughs> spoiled, rotten. That's what happens when a kitty gets nothing but pure love. She does get nothing but pure love. It's true. Love and worshipful affection. I mean, <laughs> did I go to school for English? I studied American literature in college. <laughs> I was an American literature. <laughs> That's important. Oh, good. Good. You're learning something important. Hunter S. Thompson was an ENTP. No, I don't think he was an ENFP. I think he was an ENTP. He was a an ENTP who was starkly libertarian and did an unfair amount of drugs. <laughs> Eric, why would you study something so completely and utterly pointless? Because you could. I mean, it, I can't believe that it was even it a was, major. It was easy. It was. I mean, technically, our major is English major, uh. but it was a, uh, a an American literature focus. So <laughs> I hate to advocate drugs, alcohol, violence, or insanity to anyone, but they've always worked for me. Said Hunter S. Thompson. <laughs> That's a great quote. Hunter S. Thompson was nuts, man. I mean, talk about what's a fair amount of drugs? An amount of drugs that regular people can afford. That guy, his drug regimen was insane. It was like, uh, He'd wake up, 
For breakfast, you'd have vanilla ice cream with Grand Marnier poured on top of it. Grand Marnier is French orange liqueur. Then he'd do a bunch of cocaine until lunchtime, in which case they'd go out to lunch, and he and his sort of secretary friend lady would drink, you know, at lunch while eating lunch and doing more cocaine. Yeah. And then, like, you know, he so he'd wake up for breakfast late, you know, like noon or something. He'd have lunch late. And then in the evening, he'd get seriously into the cocaine, and he'd also take acid and project porno pornographic movies on his wall while he was writing. <laughs> wow. Plus taking amphetamines, of course. <clears throat> yeah, I bet he did have the quality stuff. But the thing is, what happened to him eventually? He, he killed himself. But, but why did he kill himself? It's because his SI failed him. He could no longer comfortably indulge in himself you know that, that'd be true if you're enfp or entp but um his politics were not enfp politics <sighs> see that's the thing i i would no more call him a genius than i would call me a genius he's an enfp run amok I'm you know did that did he as a consequence as an enfp run amok come up with an occasional genius thing, yeah. But uh, I just call him a guy with too many words. You know? Good, good way of describing him. I describe myself in some sense in the same way, except I actually believe I'm doing much more purposeful work than he ever did. Yeah, you are. Because his, his sort of critiques on society and nihilistic romps are all well and good, but it's not really work, per se. You guys, I had an epileptic seizure a few nights ago, and I don't have epileptic seizures. You're too lazy to Google it. Were you on an unusual combination of drugs? Did you take any drugs you hadn't taken before? You should go to the... You should go to the... Uh, doctor and say I had an epileptic seizure. That's the core thing you yes. need to go to the doctor for. Yeah. Asking me on the internet is not going to be providing you any meaningful information. Mm -hmm. I don't know why you had an epileptic seizure. Um, perhaps you have epilepsy. If in fact you had an epileptic seizure, then you have epilepsy. So, Raphael, that sort of thing is not a legitimate question. It's just a veiled attack. So I'm just going to put you on timeout. Epilepsy is the best. All the best writers had mad CZs. Um, <coughs> it's impossible to say what caused your seizure, but it was definitely COVID. Pick one. Hugs, no drugs, or drugs, no hugs. Um, drugs, drugs, no hugs. I can have physical contact without hugging and manage to be close to somebody without hugging. We could leg touch. Yeah, we could We could press our bodies together as long as we leave our arms at our sides. Yeah. And then we still get to smoke weed. Or it would suck to have no hugs, but it would suck more to have no drugs. Yeah. ESCP and Egram 8 caused my seizure. Did ESCP and Egram 8 also cause you to persistently misspell the word seizure? Because what you're talking about is an ocean, an ocean bound fit of some sort. I also would choose no bugs. Oliver Lyon. 
Uh, keep the hugs and the drugs. Get rid of the bugs. Yeah, no bugs. <laughs> yeah, this slider's on its last legs. <laughs> it is. It's. Yeah. I got this when I went to visit Horse Mongler in Arizona. Wow. At the head shop in Arizona. <clears throat> but because you spell C-S-E-A, it's an ocean. It's a nautical pun. I don't know if you're into nautical puns or not, but I'm really into nautical puns. Because <laughs> see, seizure is spelled S-E-I, not S-E-A. But C-S-E-A refers to the ocean. Hence my ocean o oceanic pun. Have you seen the skunk again? No, but I'm sure it's around. We smell it occasionally. Like It doesn't, not like a full blast smell, but sometimes you catch a whiff of skunk around the house, you know? It's around. <coughs> my, mo <coughs> my mom was like <coughs> mortified to hear that there was a skunk. She's like, <gasps> The skunk's just one of a series of a number of different beasts that take advantage of the peacock feeding area. I've seen other birds there as well. Uh -huh. So, you know, trouble comes around and he gets fed down there. Pete, Pete comes around, he gets fed in the same place, and they both get fed cat food. Well, cat food is a popular food for all kinds of animals, uh, not just cats. So the skunks, even though they are not cats, they like cat food. Peacock, not a cat, nevertheless likes cat food. Other birds, also not cats, but nevertheless like cat food. <laughs> you know, the thing is, if you really want to attract birds to your backyard, don't get put out bird seed in your bird feeder. Put cat food. Handsome skunks or smelly hunks? Smelly hunks is is one of the you know fancily fonted and exclamation point phrased phrases on the front of the box of Gamey Snouts and Ears brand breakfast cereal. Who would like a bowl of Gamey Snouts and Ears brand breakfast cereal? Um Smelly hunks, exclamation point. <laughs> if you're playing the Rachel smoking game, <laughs> you're your smoking game, that's your cue. With a side of pickled sausage, right. Now with 10% more pickled sausage. Um, turns your milk from white to greasy. Ooh, white to greasy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then in the commercial, there's two kids going, Wow! So you know that that's impressive. Aww. Coming home once a while, a while back, I thought my dog was outside digging under the back stairs. So I called her and she turned to look at me and it was a skunk. <laughs> Skunks don't make me scared at all because they're not scared of me at all. And they're, they're not scary looking like possums are. Um, possums are scary looking. Mm -hmm. um, frankly, Morge, I love them. I love the aesthetics of early Soviet era Russia. And in fact, I gave it to uh, not host Mark as a gift, but I had for years a, a Soviet propaganda poster I brought back with me That's from cool. Moscow when I went to visit there. And it was a propaganda poster that was in classrooms. And it was very coolly illustrated, but it said in Russian, um, young comrades, no, uh, School children, protect your textbooks as your young comrades will need them in the coming school year. <laughs> so it said on it in Russia. Wow. So uh I do like that that aesthetic. And I gotta say, the uh the subway trains in Moscow, the subway stations underneath under the ground there with their mosaics and stuff are incredible. The most beautiful subway system I've ever seen anywhere in my life is the Soviet era subway system in Moscow. Mm. It's, it's gorgeous. Of course it's gorgeous with, with crazy communist shit, you know, like um, hammers and sickles and, and this, you know, drawn muscularly drawn Russian farmer, uh, you know, with a scythe cutting down the wheat and stuff in this sort of epic grand scale 
and all in mosaic in the, wow. in the subways. But um, yeah, it's it's beautiful. So did nine did nine eleven happen because Tiny Man Six Six is too beautiful? Yes. Yeah, I think so. That's why they hate us. George W. Bush hypothesized it was because of our freedom. They really hate us because of your beauty. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go read all the things like I said I was going to. So let me make sure I read them all. Not naughty, not nautical nodding. I'm secretly really a famous INFJ musician, Tiny Man 66 says. Okay. I love wildlife wandering into my backyard. That's why I put out bird feeders, not just for the birds. <coughs> Hi, handsome skunks and smelly hunks. I'm a famous INTP musician, homie. Let's collab. I just want a sense of normal every now and then. <coughs> Sorry for earlier about C.S. Joseph Kong, says Wary a King. <coughs> No apology is necessary. What was the comment? I don't even remember what it was. I'm sorry to gross you out, Beeping. <laughs> Cannot all seafaring puns are weapons of mass destruction. This is wrong. That's pretty good. That's a pretty clever one there. <coughs> <coughs> Wouldn't it be hard to find the perfect food for every animal out there? It's, it's cat food, I'm telling you. That's the perfect food for every animal. Raccoons love it, too. Um, I agree. Skunks are handsome. They smell, but they're beautiful. As long as you don't bother the skunk, the skunk assumes you're not going to bother it. Skunks are used to other people being, other animals being like, okay, I'm not going to fuck with that thing. Yeah. Um, they're very presumptuous. That's why they get run over a lot. They assume they can just walk slowly wherever they want and they'll be fine. <laughs> this Rachel play, the Rachel's cough game. I smell some recursion here. It would just be iteration, actually, of yourself. You just put the results back into the same system again. If it produces the same results again, mm -hmm. you put it back in again. Yeah. But if it produces different results, then you don't. So I appreciate your math joke, but it's actually not the right math joke. <laughs> How's that for TI tool? <coughs> they never sprayed me, but my dog has been sprayed three times, says Valerie Alwood. Kristen says, what do you think of INTPs? I think they're great. I like them a lot. We have this, they they can understand me and and address what I'm saying on its merits and appreciate it or not accordingly. <coughs> and that is very valuable to me. They are ridiculously adorable. Even the male ones, like Spacey was just so adorably hopeless that you just go, ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Boy, you really are burdened by this SE Polar thing, aren't you? Um, INTP fangirl phase. I never had an INTP fanboy phase, but uh, I do like them a lot. And they are funny. They can be hilarious. If you walk up calmly talking to a skunk, they don't spray. They only spray if they feel like they can't get away. Right. Uh, like when I was looking at the skunk last night, I wasn't worried about it. Would you rather, one, have to change your clothes every hour, or two, audibly fart every time you make eye contact with someone? <laughs> oh. And number one, I guess? Mm hmm So I would choose two. Because basically, number two is you don't get to make eye contact ever again. I'm not afraid of skunks like I am a mother raccoon, but I don't want to get sprayed if I startle it. Any advice today for Argus Facts? Hmm. Let me think. Advice. Oh, Fianti. The kittiness is so true in you. It's so just. All right, here's some advice. It's so Try never to let the trash in your car extend beyond one seat well's worth of space. That, I think, is good general advice. So in my car, the seat behind Rachel's seat, the foot area of that is our trash area. So we put our, our fast food bags or whatever there. And then periodically, I clean it all out and throw it all away. The key thing is, as long as it's fits comfortably in that one area down there. It's not that much trash. It's not that big of a deal. 
as soon as it starts, I can't fit trash into that spot anymore. It's time to clean it up. Because otherwise your car will just get full of trash. That's my advice for today. I thought it was because you touched yourself at night. Why does my touching myself influence your thinking? Is that why you think? Is that is, do you do you think only when I touch myself or expressly when I touch myself, but also in other occasions? Uh, let's see here. They rebuilt it recently. Less Soviet era brutalism. I kind of missed it. Oh, they rebuilt the Me Moscow Metro? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I guess I visited at the right time. Uh, I despise C.S. Joseph, says Valerie Alwood. He's an asshole. He's too arrogant. Well, that's why people hate me, too. It's because I'm arrogant, supposedly. But uh, I don't I don't, I don't even despise C.S. Joseph. I just, I just, he just makes me sigh. You know, like, it's like, he's not purposefully making more work for me, but he is making more work for me. What do I think of INFJ males? Well, my, my closest friend for a long, long time was an INFJ male. And we eventually had a falling out that was mostly my fault, I think. Uh, but um, but yeah, I I feel like ah, my people, I, you know, because remember that I grew up and came of age and had much of my adulthood even. Um, without a whole lot of active engagement with the internet because of the time period. And so that limited my capacity to, uh, to know what people in the world were like. I was stuck on a bunch of sensors and I had this one friend, IMJ, who was an intuitive and it seemed like he was the only sane person in the world sometimes, you know? Uh... Do I like board games? Mm, probably more than computer games. Winston's mom says, 22 watching now while host Eric of Talking With Fans People, fame and renowned, will let us read your chat and respond. Thank you to Varich, E Amigas, E and Amigos, and any seafarers wandering our way. Demonstrative TE, why must you fail me? Tell me you matrix glitching stories. My dog always got sprayed, but this bastard glances at me and then goes back to digging. Kristen says, I love Spacey. Yeah, I miss Spacey. It's, Spacey is a, a sad, sad thing. Um, you know, he, he, you know, I guess you'd say turned on me or something, but it was understandable. He was trying to be a good partner for his woman, but I mean, he pulled a very ENTP move there, really. It, it, more FI polar seeming than FI eighth, really. But he did leave her eventually. Rachel does love her kitty. You are correct. Oh. She's petting her kitty right now. Yeah, it's like, oh. so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She is a sweet and good and just and true kitty. Yeah. I learned how to do kitty from Eric. Utter Self says, in Finland, we have raccoon dogs. Neither raccoons nor dogs. 100% vicious badger-like assholes. Interesting. Kenton Davies said, I texted Spacey and he never got back to me. I was trying to put together that NTP roundtable. Oh, sorry to hear that he never got back to you. You don't like making eye contact with people anyway, says Valerie Alwood. So if you don't see, I, I actually don't love eye contact either, but I don't, I would like to reserve the capacity to engage in it without farting out loud. Valerie Alwood, I'm married to a neatness Nazi. So cars never have one piece of trash. See, that's interesting because my dad's car was never had trash in it, 
But I remember when I was younger, my mom's car did. And she wouldn't let my dad, I guess, clean it. But then later on when I was, by the time I was like back from college or something, mom's car never had any trash in it either. So I, I don't know what happened, but sometime during my childhood that, that changed. Um, we're experiencing some delay, thought Eric as he read this comment. <laughs> we are experiencing some delay. Imagine C.S. Joseph walking into a roast consisting of NTPs. Imagine including C.S. Joseph in a round table of actual NTPs. Huh. What would happen? Uh, that is something that I would watch. That's like a New Year's Eve fight. Johannes Anderson says, hi, if FE has to do with social grace, is the grace specific to one's culture or is it more universal than that? Well, I think that there are, that basically all FE comes down to two strategies, be perceived as warm or be perceived as competent. And depending on where your F or your T's are, you're naturally going to be perceived as warm and you're naturally going to be perceived as competent more easily than the other one. So for me, it's more easily, it's more easy for me to be perceived as competent than it is for me to be perceived as warm. Um, I sort of, in order to be as competent seeming as I seem, I have to forsake some warmth inherently. There's, they're not, they're not mutually exclusive. They're not inversely proportional, but it's difficult to successfully incorporate a lot of them both. Uh, because there's a finite amount of time and a limited amount of attention that you have from people, I guess, in part. But um, the the core thing is what plays out as competent or what plays out as appropriately warm will vary from culture to culture. But those those basic pillars of human uh, identity, competence and warmth, um, that is say ways in which people relate to other people. Um, are universal. <clears throat> so that's my answer to that. Designing an RPG with strict combat, what do you think? Uh, I'm not sure what that would look like. I don't know what strict combat, strict combat means. Your matrix glitches a lot now? Is that your nickname for your vagina? <laughs> <laughs> My matrix glitches a lot now. That's how Tiny Man Six Six says she's starting her period. Valerie Evelyn says, "What happened with Spacey?" Well, Spacey uh, was here. He was. I mean, it's, it's a, a fairly long story, really. Well, this is what I tell you to the people is that um, you guys were working together, and the deal was that. He was going to be taking over most of the um, typing sessions that way that he could pay for his own place with Tori. Right. I agreed to give him all of the revenues from the typing sessions for, uh, it, it, you know, for basically until as long as needed until until he didn't need all the revenues from it. Right. Anymore. But the thing is. You know, I what I said to him was, if it's going to be enough for you, though, it, you're going to need to meow, meow, and meow, meow. And he had trouble following through on some of those same kind of things that I've trouble following through on. Um, stuff that is very important, but not necessarily. It just requires some SE. Like I told him, make up, make us every day. You should upload one or two very short videos on cognitive functions, and pimp the. The service and you know we'll get we'll start getting plenty of business well he didn't ever do it you know and uh i probably overestimated how easy it was to drum up sufficient business for him to, to be self-sustaining but um you know the thing is he brought this other person into the mix which was tori that he sort of said, well, look, she's flying to the airport and your choice, Eric, is you have two choices. You either go with me to pick her up or you don't, but fit, you know, and it's like, okay, well.
Um, okay. Argus Fax says C.S. Joseph is interesting, but his test sucks ass. See, I would I would totally put it the other way around. I think his test is interesting precisely because of what everybody else hates about it, which is that it won't let you do certain things. It successfully typed to me as ENTP uh, by whatever Hooker Crooked did, you know. Don't listen to Raphael. What are you doing, Raphael? What What do you think you're doing? Just going around being a dick to people for no reason, or what? If C.S. Joseph is a baby-faced Hugh Jackman, does that mean that he has a Wolverine-style titanium skeleton? Does he look like Hugh Jackman? I've never thought that before. I've never even I've never heard that before. Or anything. Uh, Hugh Jackman being the guy who plays Wolverine in the X-Men movies, right? You're doing Raphael business? <laughs> Raphael, you are... You are something else. Eric, could you help me become a commercially successful YouTube typologist in theory? Yeah. I mean, assuming you don't have the same shortcomings I have. <laughs> assuming you're willing to actually apply yourself to something. But that's a big assumption, right? It, it's like people go, well, that's the easy part. Just apply yourself to something consistently over time. I mean, that's the easy part. That doesn't require any creativity or thinking or something. But that's the problem with your intuitive, the creativity and the Ideational parts the easy part, not the consistent follow through. Hi, Montez Hayek. I'm curious. Do you have an update for us? If so, please do join me in the room. I'd love to hear what's happening. If you don't have an update for us yet because you haven't had a chance to give no new information, that's fine. Uh, we'll just hope to get an update one of these occasions. But if you do have an update and like talk to me, let me know and I'll go into the room. So for those of you who weren't here when it occurred, Machaz Hayek the other day came and talked to me and the group about his woman situation in Egypt, where there's this, uh, you know, they've got to go through these protocols before you get to talk to a, a girl. You got to talk to her dad first. And he talked to this one girl's dad, and she said, he has to wait a year and a half to start talking to her until she finishes her, her studies, right? And so he's like, now, I'm pretty smitten with this girl, but I'm not smitten with the idea of waiting a year and a half. What should I do? Well, Outer Self had the very practical notion, I thought, of find a poor man with lots of daughters so that, <laughs> that are all within the marrying age range so that you can be a, really have a a buyer's market, you know. Um, but anyway, uh, I think we, we we talked it out and threw various ideas at them, and then he took them away and is, as he says, sort of factoring them into his thinking. And he'll let us know when he's concluded with that and give us an update as to what happened. Uh, Valerie Alwood says, "I feel like I'm this weird ENFP, but introverted." Well, if you're an INFP on Adderall, that might make some sense, right? I look like a shrink today. Is it because of my black shirt? Do INTPs get bored easily? Not if they're given a computer with good Wi-Fi and plenty of sodas and ramen. Then they're entertained for the rest of their lives. Because, you know, INTPs are preparing for their grand opus at some point. Once they've done all of the calculations needed first to establish what they need to establish and eliminate what they need to eliminate, then they can begin presenting stuff. Of course, 
they're undertaking a rather large understanding project. Namely, they're trying to understand all the universe and everything that happens within it. So it usually takes more than a lifetime to complete their preparations. So most of them die before they actually do anything. But for the long lived ones, they are going to hand you something really comprehensively brilliant at age 86 or so. NTPs are polymath. Don't call me a polymath. I'm a unimath. I only use one kind of math. Addition. I refuse to use subtraction, multiplication, division. That's just one kind of math. I use one function in math. Addition. What's seven divided by seven? Fourteen. So proud of you. Thanks. I'm unimath, okay? Well, what they're currently after, so somebody here asks, uh, INTPs are potentially after the theory of everything. Right now, they're still trying to determine they're, what they're after at the moment is whether or not it's a meaningful calculation to draw the calculations they're trying to draw regarding whether or not a uh, theory of everything is itself subsumed by itself. It's going to be a while till they work out that knot. Once they work through that knot, then they'll actually begin potentially working on a theory of everything. Again, more likely to be a meta critique of their own efforts to begin to work on a theory of everything, but uh, somewhere in the vicinity thereof. I will read your chat and respond to it. I will follow your command. See what it says. I don't see it. Oh, is that it? Is that your chat you want me to respond to? Read my chat and respond. I am here responding to your chat. I only have like Facebook. Well, you also have YouTube. Yes, because we're engaging in disengaged calculus aided by NE. We are figuring everything out. We are mapping all things. Eric Weinstein had one that fell flat recently, theory of everything. I think he's an INFP, though. I don't think he's an INTP. Or an e I don't think he's an ENFP either. I think he's an INFP. I don't know, though. I haven't really paid that much attention to that guy. I sound like a thespian. Don't you call me that. Whoa. A thespian. A dandy. Everyone knows it. Yeah, I'm just a dandy. Thespian, thespian implies I'm acting. This is my real voice. <laughs> That's how I really talk. You'd like an anti-response. You're not going to get one, Bumble Hot. You're not going to get one. Okay, let's see here. The TINI NE process of a comprehensive theory is implicit to the type. It doesn't matter if the material is meaningful or not. Well said, Kenton. Well said. So you can take your material and your meaning and shove them both up your respective holes. That's what you're really trying to say, huh? And his brother, INTP, says, how do you say your name, random symbol? Most consider Eric Weinstein as an INTJ. Oh, well, I don't think he's an INTP, is what I was saying. Thanks. Thanks for noting the dapperness of it. I uh, had it dapped earlier. Had it, had more dap added to it. So previously it was dap. Now it's dapper than it was before. So... But da, 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 da. Yeah, INTVs are sweet. They're they're nice people. Like all of Alpha Quadra, we really want to be friends. You know, some of us are better at it than others. I'm not necessarily always good at being friends. You know, Maz Maz Tech, whatever his name is. That's Maz Tech. That's, what's his, his last name's Hayek, but I don't remember his first name. It's hard to remember because it's not a normal American name. 
I have trouble with Motaz. Motaz is his name. Um, anyway, like that was very heartwarming for me because I like to weigh, I like to make friends. I like to be friendly. I like to have pleasant conversations with people. I don't like to, to battle all the time. I, I, you know, and the thing is, I used to maybe like to battle more um, and or Motaz, M-O-T-A-Z. Motaz Hayek is his name. He's from Egypt. I appreciate having people from all around coming and talking to me. It's great. Um, I mean, Scandinavia and other places that I consider Scandinavia, they don't consider themselves Scandinavia, like Finland. Um, Scandinavia, I love you, but other parts of the world could also be into me. Every For every word one speaks, humanity collectively loses one IQ point. Words are fundamentally meaningless. Your feces is all that matters. Is feces plural? Should I have said that? Your feces are all that matters? If so, all of Ryan Hannah, I want to thank you. Because I think I've been misconjugating the verb, assuming feces is a singular subject. I, I, it sounds better to say your feces are, doesn't it? No, not mo jazz, mo taz. Motaz Kayak, Hayek, Hayek, Motaz Hayek, <laughs> H-Y, H-Y-E-K or something. Scandinavia and Nordic countries alike, I appreciate you guys in the Scandinavia and Nordic regions because you seem to be overrepresented from Europe in my viewership. So... Thank you, Scandinavia and Nordic regions. Uh, regular Western Europe, Eastern Europe, let's get our act together, okay? Well, I want you to look to the Nordic countries and Scandinavia. They know how to watch Talking with Famous People. Why don't you? I'm, I'm looking at you, Greece. You don't even belong in the European Union. There, I said it. I said it. You're an American with a Scandinavian name? You've never met anyone with your name? Is your name Fjord, by any chance? Claude was from Serbia. He said he was from Serbia. My stats say he wasn't from Serbia. Or he was using a, a VPN because... Um, my stats say I have no views from Serbia at the time when he was around. I had none. Zero. It was at the very bottom of the list. So he's either not from Serbia or he's using a VPN. Dollar <laughs> 69 makes a good point. Dollar 1969 makes a really good point. Well, that symbol is sort of an unusual name. How do you say it? What's your name? How, what am I supposed to call you? I mean, he may well be from Serbia. I, I don't know. But what I'm saying is he wasn't his, according to YouTube, I don't, you know, he maybe he uses an ink. I don't know. Cause he, I don't know. According to my cured, 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 come over here. Geard. This is my niece. This is my nephew, Keard. Does your does your uncle and aunt say that about you? This is my nephew, Keard. That's how Scandinavian people talk. Swedish people, particularly. If you've ever seen the Muppet Show and seen the Swedish Chef, oh yeah, that's exactly how real Swedish people talk. You're already pretty, 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 pretty. Like that. Skull. Is that some sort of like something tough? Some brand of something tough? Skull. S-K-A-L. It sounds like a brand of like firearm, you know? Scowl. It's pronounced scowl, even though it should have two L's. Perkily. Perkily.
That's um, an adverb that one mostly uses to describe how breasts bounce. Perkily. Perkily Silhin Koska saw Tana Vi. I want to base my characters off MBTI, but make them interesting. I mean, the thing is, Argus Facts, the truth of the matter is, if you make them archetypal, they will be interesting. My challenge is to make them be what they are rather than keep turning them into, you know, a more of a mishmash of different elements, you know. <laughs> Let's rape the horses and ride off on the women. <laughs> that's, <clears throat> that's not the Vikings who said that, though, Alan Bryan. That was El Guapo's. That was uh, that was Chevy Chase when he's trying to convince El Guapo that he's really part of his um, squad in Three Amigos. As El Guapo's going to down the line to his men, he says, "Yeah, I am El Guapo, but I know all of my men like you, Diego. Together we sack the town of La Puebla." E Jose, you and I, we stole all those watermelons from those farmers. E, who are you? <laughs> I'm Jose. And what did we do together? And that's when he says that line. We raped the horses and rode off on the women. <laughs> you see. Uh, I was very pleased, additionally, to have another uh, movie scene brought to mind yesterday by Genexial, who referenced one of my very favorite scenes from a movie, namely the scene with that that little bald guy in Princess Bride when he's doing the Game of Wits versus Wesley, <coughs> who proposes a Game of Wits, you know, I'll put the poison into one cup. You choose. We both drink. That's how the game works. And then he proceeds proceeds along with his a game of wits with me to the death. I accept. And uh, <laughs> plays it plays Ti right. It's a perfect example of a Ti somebody doing doing Ti any just indefinitely right. Well, what I know about you is that you are clearly very strong because you have bested my strong man. So, being strong, you might think you can survive the poison and leave the poison in front of you. So I can clearly not choose the cup in front of you. However, I also know that you bested my, my swordsman, which means you've studied. And being studied means you're educated. And being educated means you know that poison is deadly. So you would put the poison far from you as possible. So I can clearly not... Drink from the cup in front of me. Truly astute. I'm just getting started. <laughs> that guy. That guy's great. He's a great actor. Whoever that, that guy is, the little bald guy. I like him. He's good. <sighs> yeah. I like that movie a lot. I've seen it a few times. <laughs> Uh, Princess Bride. Yeah, Princess Bride. Yeah. yeah, I don't know the guy's name either. He's in a lot of stuff, though. Wasn't he in Toy Story? He might have been. Oh, oh yeah, he was uh, the dinosaur. Yeah. He's the dinosaur. He's got to be the dinosaur guy's yeah, voice. Yeah, he is the dinosaur. And he's in um, my, my Dinner with Andre. Yeah, a movie I saw in college, and I don't think I've seen it since. And I wouldn't mind seeing it again. Because I remember in college thinking it was great. Evening, y'all, says Luba Mare. Cats, host Eric, can you help a midlife INTP differentiate FI from FE better? My usual go to stoicism is lately being replaced by conscious awareness of feelings, delight, annoyance, etc. Oh, your cognitive function metacognition has, has caused you to, <clears throat> has caused your root chakra to open to your feelings. Um, 
can I help you differentiate FI from FE better? Well, I, I'm going to get to that question in a second. I want to get to the end of the things here, the chats, and then I'm going to go back to this question because it's something that Rachel and I were talking about in the car, in fact, regarding um, Asha Deep's earlier comment on my video. So anyway, Jeff Shaw says, that is a great shirt, Eric. Black is you, man. Thank you, Jeff Shaw. I, you know, I've heard, I've heard equivalent positive comments when I've worn long sleeve black shirts before, so I think you might be right there. Uh, I'm watching TWFP from below because I kicked my chair, so my typing is off. Okay. Good to know. Thanks for keeping us informed. He has been in other stuff as well, uh, Alan Bryan confirms. Andre the Giant was in Princess Bride, true. He's dead now. Ronde the, Andre the Giant is. Rest in peace. Wallace Shawn is his name. Oh, that guy's name is Wallace Shawn? Oh. That's a, I wouldn't expect him to have that name, right? I would expect him to have a name like, uh, like, like, uh, Walter, Walter Cacklestan or something like that, you know? Thoughts on INTJ ENFP meme? I don't know what INTJ ENFP meme means. Black goes with everything. Um, not coffee. Not coffee. Black coffee is not good to drink. Now I'm going to go back to the question about differentiating between FI and FE. So the reason why I was so bothered by that guy's comment this morning, Ashley's comment, was because he accused me in the opening thing. He said, it, it's getting harder for you to hide your interest in other women. Um, that was the thing that bothered me so much. And I was talking about it with uh, Rachel in the car. What I concluded sort of was that it's an, I feel like it's an FI attack. In other words, on some ground, I'm being accused of not caring enough about Rachel. And in that regard, it's my poll, right? I don't feel competent to defend against that kind of attack. I don't know how to prove that, you know? Um, but that, 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 that attack bothers me less, really, because I don't personally have any concerns about whether or not I was actually uh, flirting with that woman or indicating that I was interested in her in some way. Um, I know I wasn't, and I know I know I wasn't thinking like that. So it's like I wasn't, I, I was maintaining the same sort of professional asexuality that I always maintain when I type people. You know, if you hire somebody to do work for you, then you are a client. You are not a, the, somebody I'm going to try to flirt with or whatever, you know? And in general, I've tried to maintain this kind of professional asexuality anyway. But regardless, the point is, so the FI attack didn't bother me so much because I knew it wasn't true. I knew it wasn't true that I was interested in this uh, woman. Um, but the F, the F, the reason that the critique bothered me is because I don't feel confident in my own FE presentation. So it made me worry, like, did I, did I come across like that? I don't feel confident in assessing that thing accurately. But one of the nice things about being with an INFJ is I was able to talk to Rachel about it, and she assured me I did not come across like that. It was not it was not something legitimate by by me behaving in a way that would be reasonably interpreted as being too flirty, uh, even though I wasn't aware I was doing it, which is is sometimes possible, right? But what, yeah, so the gist of what I'm saying is that I'm more subject to critiques in areas where I feel less competent. If you were making TI critiques, I probably wouldn't respond to them because they'd be so terrible they wouldn't be worth my time. And I don't feel threatened by that at all because I know I'm perfectly competent to adjudicate that matter. If I think it's a terrible TI critique, then it is. I'm, I'm correct. However, it's conceivable for me, knowing myself and my, my strengths and weaknesses, that... Uh, that I would come across like that and not be aware of it, you know? Do you think it could be an attack on your behavior, but rather an attack on your and Rachel's sense of trusting each other? Uh, 
I, I don't think it's an attack on my behavior. Uh, I, I never, that's, that's what I was trying to get across in the first place is I never really, um, Okay, so there was a question I had never asked before. I had never asked about anybody's sex life before. And one of the reasons why I felt comfortable asking it then was because Rachel was sitting right next to me. So, you know, uh, I guess that must be what it links to. See, I didn't even, I hadn't even thought that. I was, I was thinking of it in a general sense. Did I, in a general sense, seem to be, be flirting with her or something? Oh, right. That's why he said that. Because of that one question I asked. That's why. Now it makes a lot more sense to me. So in that regard, I made myself vulnerable by asking that kind of question. And I never will again. So that, that's my approach to FE. This is why I was so bothered by that comment. Because I didn't get it. You know? I didn't understand it. I didn't understand. I got, I got this person is trying to attack me. He's going to use whatever ammunition he can find. But I didn't think there was any ammunition there. And so it was confusing me and bothering me. Now I realized, no, I did give him a piece of ammunition. And he, and I had just forgotten about it. That's, that's what happened. Okay. That, now it makes sense. And now I feel satisfied that I, I'm, the critique no longer bothers me because I understand, oh, this is what happened. I gave him a, I gave something that could be used as a piece of ammunition and... He used it. And that's my bad for being careless in that regard. Eric, why do you say INFJ game is play the man, not the cards? Well, because poker is not really about what hand you have. It's about how, how likely you believe your hand is to win. And if, if you can detach yourself from your own hand entirely, then, um, then you're not wondering whether your hand can win or not, but rather whether anybody else are at the table believes their hand can win. And if they don't, you'll take the pot down. Um, you know, it's like uh, that Doyle Brunson said he could – pretty well just as easily play without looking at his cards because he was never playing his cards. He was playing the other people. I just watched Dallas 1969's video. I've never felt so called out. He's like a male version of you. Now I want to read Dallas 69's video. I don't want to watch it. Um, only six subscribers. Hi, I want to spend. Oh, it's this guy. It's you, right? <laughs> it's that guy I typed the other day, right? Is that who that is? That's that guy I typed the other day, right? I mean, the thing is, I agree, at herself. It's not a mistake I'm going to make again. I'm not going to ask that kind of question again. The reason I made that mistake in that moment is uh, any any leading the way. I was just I was trying to think of some other way I could try to distinguish ISFJ from INFJ. I was having trouble telling her telling whether she was an INFJ or an ISFJ. That question came to mind. I just threw it out there, you know. But that's the sort of thing that. I got to get burned on once and then I'll never get burned on it again. So that's just my learning curve, you know, won't happen again. Um, is on track accurate with his descriptions of INFJ? I have no idea. Um, you are, I got to say Dallas 1969. You are the example I point to now for uh, a grown INFP, like somebody who is, uh, you know, because you, you've got, 
you've always got you're always gonna have very you're always gonna have different incarnations of of a given type. Some people are gonna be young and in an immature immature version of the self. Some people are gonna be damaged and or walking the wrong path. You know, like for a long time I was a drunk. And during those years, I was not a healthy version of an ENP. I was not a good manifestation of an ENP. I was an unhealthy one and one that needed to do a lot of growing still. Um, and a lot of times it's easy to talk about the limitations of INFPs and INTPs because they're SE poor. So it's it's um, it's easy to make jokes about, you know, because uh, I can't get anything done. Well, Dollars 1969 is the example of and I have Pete, who, in my opinion, has done all the growth stuff that INFPs need to do to overcome their shortcomings in the way that INFPs have to do their own version of growth stuff to overcome their own shortcomings and stuff like that. Um, and it's it's important, I think, also that we don't spend I don't spend all my time talking about uh, where where types other than me fall short of my expectations because blah, 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 blah. when in reality it's it so much has to do with the individual and what part of their growth arc they're, they're in. Like, uh, as an ENTP, ENTPs in general might be subject to meow, 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 that I'm not actually subject to anymore because I've grown to solve those inherent shortcomings or at least address them su successfully enough that they're no longer uh, liabilities. Yeah, it's all 1769, I know. Well, for me, being a grown NTP means, in large part, it, owning my man-childhood. Like, I'm I'm never really going to be a grown-up. It's part of being a grown NTP is accepting that reality, you know? So being being grown doesn't necessarily correlate with any, any conventional standard of understanding of what it means to be grown. It really depends on the type and what areas are implicitly going to be difficult for them. Well, I'm glad you're you. You know, I'm glad you're you as well, Rachel. It seems, it occurs to me that being a drunk, in some sense, was an expression of my F.I. poor. Uh, like, I really didn't know what was important or couldn't, couldn't maintain a sense of that over the immediate short term. You know, my feelings might have informed me something about the way I was living that should have been informative. But instead, the feelings pass in a moment and I forget whatever lessons they had to teach me. Are you going to tell a story, Eric? Tell me a story with many paths. Oh, wait. You going potty? No, I'm not going potty. I'm standing over by the door uh, so that it doesn't get so smoky in here. Uh, when I'm smoking cigarettes, I don't like to have... The room closed up, makes it smell like cigarette smoke, and, I, and it's like... I appreciate that. I, well, yeah, it's, not, it's for her, but it's also for me. I don't like it when the room stinks like cigarette smoke. It's got kind of a stale smoke. Yeah. yeah. Whereas weed smoke is fine. Although sometimes, it depends on the weed, too. Some strains smell better than others. Yeah. So I tried... Try to stand by the door when I'm smoking. The thing is, um, it's pretty damn cold outside right now. So my feet are getting a little bit chilly, but that's okay. I can, I can live. I'm confident I can live. Hey, I like that about Eric. He's just him. Tells what he's thinking, what's in his brain at the moment. I wish everyone would do that. That'd just be themselves. I mean, I appreciate you liking that quality of me. That's a quality that has to do with being an action type, which is to say I'm most, I'm most natural and comfortable putting information, saying words, and talking about stuff. And... One of the reasons why I'm a good match for Rachel is she's a receiving type. She's naturally most comfortable receiving information rather than being responsible to ideate a bunch herself. Yeah, that's why I'm off screen right now. That's 
Maybe yeah. She's off screen right now. It's like the thing is, of course, I'm so self-absorbed. I don't really think about where where Rachel is. <laughs> of, oh, when I'm doing this, I'm not thinking about whether Rachel. Is. The only thing is, if I'm if I get up here to smoke and she's sitting right there, I won't turn the camera to me usually because it. I'm assuming that well, this little she'll talk now. Yeah. But um, if she's not sitting right there, then I will turn the camera to me, and I, I I don't think oh Rachel's not sitting here. I just it's like I'm only triggered to pay attention to her when she is sitting right next to me. So I don't know. It's it's another one of those fi polar things where fi polar, but also I think seven. You know, like seven's kind of selfish. So that's why I don't mind because I get the same way. I like we don't like to have to spend a lot of our time. Putting ourselves in another person's shoes. Yeah. But we do. And when we do, we're not really putting ourselves in their shoes. We're saying, here's how people have responded badly to this in the past. You know, it's and so I wonder if they're gonna respond like this. True. Rachel and I do that to each other a lot unnecessarily. We put ourselves through stress unnecessarily because we think um that somehow we have to proactively defend against the other person critiquing our failure to meow. Mm Okay, I'm done with this cigarette. So I'm going to come back over here now, sit down, and I'm going to shockingly, once again, indulge myself by playing this song. Sure, I know. That's not the most popular thing I can do around here. Some people like me playing songs, and some people don't like me playing songs. But, you know, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas and thus I am asleep. So I can't help it. I just do what I do. You know, being asleep makes that happen. New window. I like that notepad now allows you to open the same thing in more than one window. It didn't used to do that. Yeah. Makes things a lot easier on me. Right, here we go. Here we go. Here's a song. A song of gladness for your heart. But it's called So Sad for Me. It was not really a song of gladness, really. It's a song of sadness, but here it is. Just brooding here won't do any good, but brooding's more and more my style. I seek the cheery ways of standing where we stood, cause I've been stuck here a while. And that's despite a natural selfishness that makes it easy to have fun but flutters in the gut become a fist as all my visions come undone i tried to stream distract and dream the afternoon away but heavy news it seems is breaking fresh now every day and for a bit i am out of it reason still unsaid Like everybody's so sensitive, so ready to just get mad. I seek the civil ways of living like a kid, cause who wants to be the dad? 
Have we lost our sense of scope and scale? Or our capacity to laugh? The sense to know we're not the whale And how to tip the golden cap? I could just dream, distract and dream the afternoon away But heavy new reality bear down on every day And for a bit I am out of it Too bad. Not too bad. Thanks, Rachel. So, when you wake up every morning, aren't you glad you were born? When I wake up every morning, I feel whatever I'm feeling that morning. Sometimes I feel mad. Sometimes I feel meh. Sometimes I feel like whatever I'm feeling in the moment, you know? I don't know. Depends. Sometimes I wake up mad for some reason. It's something that happened a long time ago, even. I was delighted to be able to enter the code and access the conference minus any boomer not-so-tech-savvy fumbling around and dropped call. Hmm. That's good. Thanks, Force Wumbler. Appreciate it. Siri, define meow. <laughs> meow is, is a word that means the noun or rest of the noun here or the rest of this sentence is unnecessary. We can just replace it with meow because you can conclude what the rest of the sentence was simply by what I've already said. So, for example, in order to experience growth in your third function, you're going to have to put up with a slower processing speed because it's going to, in some sense, meow, you're meow. <laughs> well, you should be able to know I'm going to say constrain your tool function by that. By everything I said prior to that leads immediately to constrain your tool function. So I should just be able to say meow, your meow, and you should know I was I meant to say constrain your tool function. That's what I'm saying. Which types can't intuit that. <laughs> but I think everybody can intu intuit that meow means meow. Um, the thing is, when you're feeling meow, that's a different meaning of meow. That means you're feeling as though there's nothing to fill your variable. How do I handle stress? I treat it like my bitch. Like that. That's how I handle stress. Um, I handle stress. I mean, it's, it's interesting. Um, question, how do you handle stress? I think the first question is really, what causes you to feel stress? And what causes me to feel stress are if there's money problems or, uh, I mean, nowadays I don't, I'm not very stressed out. I just, I don't have a whole lot of stress. Uh, like stubborn public wrongness will stress me out. So I tend to avoid certain kinds of news stories and stuff. Uh, has my sense of humor changed since you were young? Not really. It's gotten better. Uh, I'm, I'm less likely to make bad jokes now. Uh, I'm better at sustaining sort of a jokey attitude or mood without actually making jokes. Um, 
But I still, if my NI was good, even as a kid, I knew it was good. I liked what was good and I didn't like what wasn't good. And it's always, my NI's always been very strong. You know, like I said earlier in a stream, the first thing I remember about music is when I was about three years old, listening to the Winnie the Pooh record in my room on my little turntable that my parents had gotten for me over and over again and singing along to it and dancing and stuff like that. Um, I could tell right away which songs were the good songs and which ones were not the good songs, you know? It was easy to tell. And it turns out, as that when I got to be an adult, that a lot of the things that I liked as a kid, um, because my dad had a huge record collection, and most of it was complete fucking garbage. Like he he was he's an ESTJ. He likes music that where the musicians display their their competency and chops and stuff, which to me is just like, I mean, I, it's hard to come up with an analogy. It's like, uh, it's like evaluating the effectiveness of, of a teacher by how hard they work. <laughs> rather than by how much the students learn, you know? It's like totally ass backwards. But um, so uh, work is your motivation, helps you stay active. Paycheck is also your motivation. Stress is not a direct tangible thing. Stress is a response to stressors in your environment. So, I mean, that's that's what I'm saying is the first question is what what do you consider a stressor? Do deadlines stress me out? You, I don't really have deadlines anymore. I actually like them when I do have them a little bit. Like sometimes, but I like these kind of deadlines. I'm scheduled to meet with Mia on Mia Day at Mia o'clock. And at that meeting, I'm going to present Mia thing. Then I'll meet that expectation because I can't show up to the meeting without having done what I have to do to do the meeting successfully. You're my favorite, yeah. I love you. I love you too, my darling. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you're welcome, Rick Rodrigo. I thought it was an interesting question. I still think it's an interesting question. So, you know, my dad stresses me out. My dad stresses me out because he's unpredictable, I guess, basically. I don't, and this this links back to the prime directive. If in fact it is in case the prime directive that uh, people try to narrow the distance between reality and map, then you can really explain everything in those terms. So, uh, like my dad attempts to resolve the distance between map and territory by insisting that the territory match the part of a map that he understands. Well, I understand the part of the map that's musicianship because I played French horn and I can tell what a good musician is sounds like. And I can listen for successful execution of, um, of what I consider a mechanical process. So in that regard, my dad, by listening to terrible music and thinking it's good, is trying to close the gap between the map and the territory. He wants the map to indicate to him what music is good, but he's NI poor. So his ability to use the NI components of mapping is very, very poor. So he simply applies those components of the mapping protocol that he does understand. And that's why he ends up liking terrible, terrible music. He doesn't really like it. I don't think, I think he just listens to it sometimes. I don't know how you would like music like that, you know? Yes. Peter and the Wolf. I always thought, I, you know, I love certain parts of this song. I would think of things as songs, you know, whatever whatever kind of music they were. Like classical music, I just said, like, oh, I like that song um, because I was a little kid, you know. And so, um, hi, Explivisited. I haven't seen you in a long time. I remember you from a long time ago. How long ago did I last talk to you? That had to be a long ass time ago. Oh, 
Mm-hmm. Well, in my opinion, good music. You're all I, out? Yeah, I'll go get another soda. Okay. Or actually, I'm going to get one of the last two Heinekens. Want to do one? Mm. I'm good. I still have stuff. Thank you. You want me to put the cheese back? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Thank you. You're gonna want the the other one of these, Rachel, when you see me enjoying it. Oh no, with the beer? You're right. Especially because it goes well with cheese, too. No, that's what I'm saying. No, this is Heineken 0.0. 0.0. I love that. Oh, there goes the cheese. So satisfying. Mm hmm. Mm, delicious. So what do I consider good music? Well, I have extremely high standards for what I listen to. Bye, Alan. Have a good evening. Bye, other self. Kayla Cunningham, you have seven children? That's a lot of children. God bless. You're what's known as a breeder. That's what the, uh, the homosexuals refer to <laughs> people like you as breeders. They'll pass by you and contemptuously snort, breeder. <laughs> you have seven kids, two cats, and two fish. Wow. You could start, you could have your own farm. You'd be like a farming community family from back uh, 100, 200 years ago. Yeoman farmers out on the plains, and you're seven kids, and you probably wouldn't have cats back then. You probably have dogs. Dabbing flight. Dabbing flight sounds excellent. I would love to have a flight of dabs. <laughs> dabbing flight's a great name. How many people understand what that means? Most people are. A minority of people. If you heard that name, would you know me what it meant? Or heard you, Rachel? What? Dabbing flight? No. Okay. So, I think of this and then like a flight of beer. No, it's a flight of, of dabs. Oh. I've never had that. It's true, Kayla, that half of your kids would have died if you had been 1800. Um, good thing you're not. Jurentius, what's my MBTI? I am an I am NETI. I say I dominant function is extroverted intuition. My second function is introverted thinking, which means that I am commonly known as an ENTP. Birth control is against your beliefs, Kayla Cunningham. It's not against my beliefs, but it is against my inclinations.
the thing about words like procrastinate, as David Spencer says, sometimes I procrastinate is it's such a personal term. What's procrastination to you may be really getting on it to somebody else, you know, like I hear Cameron sometimes say things like, you know, hey, I can be pretty disorganized sometimes too. What he means is like he left his hammer on a shelf instead of putting it back where it belongs one time or something like that, you know. <laughs> He doesn't mean he can actually be disorganized sometimes. He's very organized. His, he knows where everything is in that garage. It's all filled up with crates full of stuff. They're, you know. He's got his garage here in Arcadia, which is the garage at his mom's house. And he's got the place he lives half the time or so in Sierra Madre, which is his girlfriend's house house. Why is birth control against my inclinations? Well, I mean, girls being on birth control is not against my inclinations. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me, right? But if I'm responsible for birth control, then it's against my inclinations. But I will pull out. I mean, I'll pull and pray, you know. I've got no problem with that. Can you call that the Catholic, going by the Catholic method? The Catholic method, yeah. Caleb Cunningham says, apparently he has not been to my house. I open cabinets and things fall out. Well, but do you know where they are? That, that's part of the question, is do you know where they are? Karma's pimp. That... Is gross. What just happened? He said, <laughs> the Legends Fall did the same thing. They both said the same thing. No, that's what her face or mouth are for. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, that's gross. Okay, I don't like to do that. It was gross. I'm so happy you don't. It always seems like a good idea right before you ejaculate. Then right after you ejaculate, you're like, ew. Yeah, the Fable Lies TJ Garage. They got they, he, he has got all the tools and little things they need to fix stuff in there. And he invited me and Rachel to go over there, and he had three scooters, one for each of us, and we rode around the racetrack on yeah, scooters. Was it fun. was fun. We scooted. We scooted. Bye, Running Fox. Bye, Running Fox. Does your letter type correlate to your function type for you? I mean, I don't think there is such a thing as a letter type. There are various names we give to NETI. I call it ENTP usually. Sessionics calls it um, ILE, Intuitive Logical Extrovert. And, you know, other people may call it whatever. But if, if you're talking about, if you're doing actual analysis rather than just playing around the outskirts of analysis, then um, we're referring to the same fundamental phenomenon, which is that because the nature of attention and the nature of perspective, people are habituated towards certain perspectives as a constriction upon ontology itself. In other words, I can't both be concurrently a person who's extremely ideationally active, always saying new things and or talking randomly or putting up new information and concurrently be somebody who's constantly organizing and checking on existing stuff. There's a finite number of hours in the day. And what it turns out is that instead of what would make logical sense, which is that a person one day is super ideational, then the next day is super organizational, then the next day is super uh, outcome oriented with their with their well organized idea, and then the next day is super execution oriented to make sure it gets done, and then the next day is super marketing oriented to make sure that it uh, gets sold well. It doesn't work like that. In fact, to be good enough at any of those things, you have to specialize, and everybody does. That's what cognitive functions 
fundamentally is, is how human beings specialize attentionally to, um, to manifest one of 16 fundamental possible strategies towards realizing the prime directive, namely to close the gap between map and uh, territory. Oh, I wanted to mention that I looked inside at the score. It's nice that we're not watching because Oklahoma was whooping the Gators' ass. Oh, yeah, they're That's whooping their ass, huh? 31-13. Mm, not a very interesting game. Okay, so Jaron Tias, here's the thing. I've heard this sort of statement before, and I want to address it directly again, as I've addressed it before. Jaron Tias says something here that is I've heard many times, but that needs to be squashed. I believe I'm an INTJ, but in socionics, I'm an LIE. So, and I struggle between the two types. Okay, so and the thing is, in socionics and in MBTI, you are the same thing. They just have different names for it. Now, if, in fact, socionics says you are an ENTJ, well, remember, socionics doesn't say anything. Some socionics test or somebody claiming to be an expert in socionics said you were that, right? It's not like the field of socionics itself said that you were an LIE. You say you believe you're an INTJ. The question then becomes, why do you believe you're an INTJ? So do you believe it because you think that the type descriptions you've read in MBTI type descriptions are that are most like you are INTJs? Or do you believe for some for some other reason, like um, like like what the problem with people will always struggle with figuring out what their type is if they don't have in place clarity regarding what comprises the right understanding of type itself. And that's, uh, Davin Flight says there's no equivalence between socionics and MBTI. Well, they're both talking about the same thing, which is cognitive functions. And they're both acknowledging the same fundamental react reality, which is there are 16 configurations possible based on the same fundamental notion of union and cognitive functions. They're both derivative of union and cognitive functions, and they both get it wrong. But um, the equivalence is they're trying to explain the same phenomenon. And the, the reason that they differ with each other about it is because they're both getting it wrong. It could be that one of them getting it wrong and one of them getting it right, but that's not the case here. So Davin Fry says, you type ENFP in MBTI. Again, MBTI doesn't type you. Somebody that types you or some test types you, right? Whether or not you are an ENFP or an IEE, either of those, those are the same thing. Remember, they both refer to the same thing. They refer to somebody who is extroverted intuition first and introverted feeling second. Now, um, if you're saying you've read type descriptions of IEE and socionics and you don't identify with those type descriptions, that has nothing to do with whether or not you are NEFI. If you say you read type descriptions of ENFPs and MBTI and you agree with those more, that has nothing to do, again, with NEFI. Both of those are sloppy approximate ways to understand what functions are and how to type somebody. Yeah, socionics has 16 types. They got the same functions and the same types. They just call them by different names. They define some of the functions differently. Where functions are defined differently one system is right or neither of them are. Those are the two possibilities. So, and so, Dabbing Flight, welcome here, because this is the place where I've resolved all the wrongnesses of those, not all of them, but most of the wrongnesses of those other things, so that we don't have to, to, to be confused like this. It's confusing, right? If socionic, somebody from so claims to be a socionist, tells you your math type in socionics, it's, you know, it's confusing. You're not a type in anything. You, you have two functions that comprise your ego block, your first and second function. Those define all the rest of the functions. All of these various systems 
are different ways of describing that same thing. What does it mean? How can we tell when somebody is NEFI? To the extent there's disagreement, they're not both right. True. I mean, okay. To the, but that's why I said to the extent there's disagreement. There can be two things side by side that are neither in agreement nor in disagreement, but they're separate claims. You know, that's possible. The thing is, the reason it occurs this way and the reason there's so much confusion is because except for because nobody prior to it being done here it addressed the core issue which is well what is what what fundamental architecture and mechanics are we operating off of here and why and how would we know if we succeeded at doing this before you begin doing anything that's kind of an important question right how will i know if i've succeeded in doing this because it requires you to know what it is you're trying to do first if you don't, if you can't answer that question, how will I know when I, if I've succeeded in modeling this correctly, then you're not going to model it correctly. All, all fundamentally accurate and proper representations of our concrete reality into an abstraction begins by saying what kind of abstract model is this what kind of thing is it modeling and how do we differentiate between valid forms of that and invalid forms of that if you don't do the meta-analysis work first you're gonna get it wrong that's just all there is to it okay so jaron tia says i believe i'm an INTJ instead of an ENTJ, since I'm oriented on goals and visions, and honestly, my communication skills kind of suck, and I don't socialize for the sake of it without any purpose. So here's the thing, Jaron Tias. An ENTJ is T-E-N-I. An INTJ is N-I-T-E. Both of those types are going to be oriented on goals and visions. So that's not a way to distinguish between them. Your communication skills kind of suck and you don't socialize for the sake of it without any purpose. That's true for both types. Equally true for both types. Let me ask you this, Jaron Tias. Which statement is more true about you? About how you think about the world? Are you more likely to think People just need to get over their past and their particular nonsense and just, just understand the vision here is clear. The path is clear. You just need to walk it like I'm saying. Or are you more likely to say, everyone's doing everything wrong, and though my rage about this runs very deep, I will display no emotion. Which of those two complaints about the world are you more likely to make? That'll tell you something. Yeah, the thing is, depending on what you're reading, where you're reading, what you're listening to, and where you're getting your answers, guarantee is, it, it, it's whether it's a it's a helpful form of research or a harmful form of research depends entirely on whether the person knows what they're talking about. And when it comes to cognitive functions, almost nobody does, frankly. People always want to stereotype you as ISFJ. Did I say you were an ISFJ? I don't think I've ever made, I don't know what type you are. I don't think I've ever thought I knew what type you were. As far as I can tell, in my mind, I don't have any recollection of ever having known what type you are. Kayla Cunningham. But it's possible you've indicated to me before and I forgot. Okay, time for a bong rip. And um, then I'm going to play a, another song, maybe even two, and then I'm going to wrap it up. Mm. 
Lubomir Katz, can you avoid and then insult the people just inside your brain? Does it make a difference? ISFP and a quick typing? Huh. What do you self-identify as, if anything? Hi, Winston's mom. I recommend a careful Wayne with a sensitive scale, low to start, getting good music ready first, and having lots of water and some large bowls at hand. Before doing what? Before gaping at you? So, <clears throat> course one, we're, the brand name to ask for, Winston's mom, the brand name to ask for, of course, is Host Eric's, Host Eric brand, uh, anal paste, and talking with fan people brand, gentle rectal cleaning brush. If, the, if you're talking about Participating in my new plan to normalize the habit of anus brushing. It needed to happen. Someone had to address it. All right. How can we make women insecure about something they're not insecure about right now so we can sell them more products about it? Um... Like, if we could normalize shiny foreheads as a beauty thing, then we could sell cans of forehead shine. Forehead shiner. I'm more fluent in writing than speaking because it lets me think about what I'm going to say or write. I'm not planning on doing any mushrooms, Well, I was asking what he knew about them for you because earlier he talked about doing shrimps or not. Yeah, I probably won't do them. I'm not, I'm, uh, the thing about what I was expressing earlier is I'm not sure how well mushrooms inter, interact with certain kinds of mental health stuff. And somebody indicated here that the drugs that Rachel is taking are probably not going to get along well with mushrooms. Yes, that's all right in particular. So then it's like not worth Probably. I don't want to mess with shit that might be, you know, it's like, I, I'm i not too much of a safety person, but uh, I, you know, it, the, the period of time that where Rachel and I were still trying to resolve the psychiatry issue was fairly long period of time. And then the period of time after we resolved this very long period of time and the stark distinction between the two and the critical importance of maintaining the latter state as opposed to the former yeah. is uh, something that makes me a little bit wary uh, more so than I would normally be. Ooh. On the other hand, I've heard people say that it's been used by psychiatrists in the past or used in psychiatry in the past to, to uh, treat those kind of issues. So I, I don't know what to think about it really, but um, just because it's a, it's kind of an artificial form of craziness that, that makes me more, want to think about it more, I guess, or something. Not that it's up to me, it's up to Rachel. I'm not trying to say it's up to me. But uh, I, I, I want to I want to know before I suggest it that I am not giving her bad advice. I would only do it with you when we were both comfortable. Right. It, you know, like I, I don't. 
Uh, now, if it is in fact the case that you need to detox up our meds first, and it's out of the question as far as I'm concerned, it's a terrible idea. Now, again, I'm not trying to control Rachel or anything, but. Uh, no, I like so, Valerie Alwood says, "Aren't we all a little crazy?" <laughs> that's the sort of thing. That's the sort of thing people say before they experience real crazy. And then you realize, oh, it. You know, that's a word that means something. That's true. I, I could ask his. I could ask the psych, the psychiatrist next time he, she meets with him. What about? Uh, What's his mom true. suggest? Talk to the psychiatrist about it. Yeah, that's a good idea. That is a good idea. Um, but I also I fully agree with Legends Fall, where he says probably not something you just want to fuck around with to find out. <laughs> Is a very yeah. good point, you know. And see, that's sort of good SE. Um, one thing I think people don't really get is that when you have a dominant function, it's not just uh, overboard that. It's also actually knowing when not to so much overboard that. So it's like I know much more clearly when when figuring out all the possibilities is worth any attention or not than my dad does. You know, he'll want to talk about what we're going to do if meow, but he'll, he'll, which is fine. It's fine to go, well, okay, if this happens, then we'll meow, and if this happens, then we'll meow. But, but that's fine when the possible variables are small enough that you, you're not doing, you're not doing meaningless ideational work because, you can't even come up with effectively the total amount of variables because it's still pending information from here and here or something. My dad will still try to ideate out saying, well, if this information here is like this, then we've got this. So you're doing too much of that. It's not, now is not the right time for trying to ideate it all out. You're, you're tackling something that the amount of work to pay off is way too high. So, um, Yeah, I mean, well, Zaylin Black. The reason I, I think so then it's certainly not not a an overly um, it's not an overly risky thing to do than to talk to the doctor if you're saying ninety percent of the doctors will not approve of experimental drugs. My point is. Um, that uh, if in fact what I've read is true, that there's some there's some evidence in the psychiatric community that mushrooms are an effective treatment for some kinds of mental illnesses and it the, the limited amount of studies that have been allowed to be done um, consistently show that in fact it doesn't aggravate but um, but tends to remedy uh, those kind of problems, then it's a different question. You know, it's like, it's quite possible. Psychiatrists would say, actually mushrooms have proved to be, have been used effectively to treat these sort of things. It just doesn't work as well as the drugs she's on, but it shouldn't cause any problem. He might say that. I don't know. You want a bad high school experience? An ESFP health teacher. <laughs> I'm not sure what what to think about that. What, what is it like having an ESFP health teacher? I would assume that they're really they really believe hardcore in certain dietary shit and stuff, maybe, or they're constantly changing the curriculum from day to day. Okay, this week we're going to be talking about semen retention. Next week we're going to water fast. I Yeah, you could find out how educated a doctor is about such topics. My big concern with mushrooms is that while some are delicious, some are poisonous, I'd be careful. I I can I know what psychedelic mushrooms look like. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> it is not possible to give me any other kind of mushroom and have me mistakenly, you know, be fooled into believing it's not it's not psychedelic mushrooms. They're very easy to recognize. And they're quite distinctive, you know. So she did change the curriculum and her standards around all the time. She also thought she was a genius and that it was only high school class we needed to pay attention to, so she gave a fuckload of homework. <sighs> that sounds like a nightmare. For health class? Homework for health class? I mean, what homework do you have? Why well, your homework's making me unhealthy, lady. I thought it was supposed to be health class. Did you learn a lot? All over line hand? Or just you learned what a bad teacher looked like? <laughs> you very clearly learned what a bad teacher looked like. That's crazy. When you were in that health class, it was the majority of your homework that semester for a health class? That's just... <coughs> I mean, some administrator needs to step in there and say, okay, lady, no, we're not doing this. All right? <laughs> you are causing all these people to suffer for no reason. You're not teaching a real subject, so just Get over yourself already. This is the only subject we could find that's easy enough for you to understand and teach. So that doesn't mean go crazy with it, all right? It means you've got tenure or something, or the union means the union has said we can't fire you, so you here's your health class. But Jesus woman. <laughs> These are human beings who are impacted by your particularly idiotic way of doing things. Hmm. I wonder what song I want to play right now. I think I want to play this song. I like this song. It reminds me of Good times and friendly people. It reminds me of America. It reminds me of baseball, apple pie, mom, and the Statue of Liberty. Me too. That's America in a nutshell. It reminds me of that time I smashed your mom in the Rory. You know me and how I'm always smashing in the Rari. Eric, are you smashing in the Rari again? Yes, I am. Don't criticize me for it. I think intuitives, especially misunderstood stuff, are BS and that they're an equal number of intuitive sensing people. Well, dabbing fight, that makes you some kind of SFP. We can't put you in a box, Dabbing Fight. You're a unique person. We don't know you. We haven't had your experiences. Words can constrain people. You're whatever you want to be, okay? What's the matter with Chad? Is he terribly bad? Is he very like Dan? Is a terrible man? Is he sort of like Jill, who can't pay her bill? Or rather like Jack, too stuck on the facts. What's the matter with Sue? Will she know what to do if they bring attitude? Will she show ingenuity? Talks about you whenever we go walking. What's the 
matter with Bryn? Is he living in sin? She's been hanging with Jim. He's looking terribly thin. What's the deal with Frank stealing fish from my tank? Colluding with you and they're talking to Lou. What's wrong with the ladies? What's the matter with men? From the feelings of Katie to the coldness of Sven. Talk about you whenever we go walking. As it lead to lesser days, spill still at the overwatered past. And whoever's left that's still okay, just tie the sails to the mast. Are you angry at Ken or at Neville again? Don't bother with Kev, he's practically dead. Focus on Bert, he's medium hurt. What's the quantity for Liz? She fail a quiz. What's the matter with Drew? Will she know what to do? If they bring attitude, will she go ingenuity? She talks about you. have much and gravely sin. Throw up the hands, stiffen the chin. Catastrophe looms heavy overhead again. Time's gone, will never be again. Thanks, Dabbing Flight. I appreciate it. The song sounds like They Might Be Giants. I mean, I'm quite familiar with They Might Be Giants. It actually doesn't really sound very much like They Might Be Giants. It's got kind of a, a similar wordiness to it, but melodically, it doesn't sound like They Might Be Giants melodies. Obviously... I'm going to have some similarities with what I would consider the flagship ENTP band of all time. They might be giants. <laughs> That's as ENTP a band as you can ever get. Yeah. They are so ENTP. <laughs> and I try to transcend that. You know, I try to have more serious stuff, FI stuff, thoughtful stuff in my repertoire um, to to not be so uniformly that, right? Because obviously, um, for an ENTP, that's being clever and having lots of stuff going on narratively is the easiest thing. But that doesn't correlate very strongly really with artistic success musically. Uh, I want my music to be, I want to accomplish songs ultimately that are more timeless than I think any but a couple of They Might Be Giants songs are. I didn't think Weird They Might Be Giants songs are, are particularly notable. Like the ones I, I am likely to listen to are the, the ones that have more of a N.I. rock song pop to them, you know, yeah. like uh, Spiraling Shape yeah. or Experimental Film. No experimental film. But I think they're, one of their best songs is actually Road Movie to Berlin, which is slow. I think another one of their best songs is End of the Tour, which is a slow song too. But uh, so thanks Oliver Lionhan. Oliver Linehan mentions Agave Weatherman and what's the big problem. So Agave Weatherman has to it some similarities with that song I just played in the sense that they're both wordy. 
But they're distinct in that the song I just played, which is What's the Matter with the Ladies or whatever. What's Wrong with the Ladies is what it's called. Um, that song is meant to be a duet. And in fact, the recorded version of it ha features Haley, who was my niece by relationship. Step niece by relationship or something like that. I don't know. She was this lady, young lady, 18 too old to call a girl to 18 or so. I don't know, a girl, lady. Um, and she had a great voice and wanted to sing, and uh, I included her on that song and one other that I, I think came out quite good. Um, the... Uh, the duet quality of it comes through in that one, obviously. So... That, those two differentiate each other from each other in that fashion, even though they're both wordy. And also in the fashion that the What's the Matter with the Ladies, What's Wrong with the Ladies song is kind of lighthearted. It's not really about anything. It's thematically consistent throughout the whole thing, but it's not meaningfully going to engage people heavily on an emotional level in any way. The Agave Weatherman is, is not light topically, it's a critique and it's also telling the story. It's much more there. It's much more grown up lyrics in general. Um, so in that regard, even though they both have kind of uh, similar wordiness kind of construction, they're, they're quite different from each other uh, as pieces of art. And then the third song mentioned there, What's a Big Problem is a totally different kind of song with totally different kind of lyric writing approach. In fact, What's a Big Problem represents my uh, uh, me making an a official attempt to consciously construct lyrics that would resonate with a particular demographic. And the demographic I picked because I figured, I, I, I think I understand what resonates with this demographic best is women in who are either in a relationship that's failing and or are having trouble finding the right relationship. Um, at the time, I was going out with that that woman, <laughs> right? So, uh, except the thing is, so I understood her history of being, like, with guys who were dicks and stuff. I kind of got a sense of, of how, of what it looks like to get, sort of pushed around as a girl or something. Um, and so I thought I'd resonate with that demographic with that song. And I think the lyrics in it work really well. Inter interestingly, <sighs> bye, Dabbing Flight. Thanks for coming. Um, interestingly, the, uh, the lyrics to that song, What's the Big Problem, they include stuff that's clearly me writing about me. In my relationship. Yeah, you guys both have lots invested. That's not a reason to, to hang around. Um, that's clearly what I was telling myself. I didn't know I was telling myself that. I actually thought I was making that up as a means of resonating with other people and it had nothing to do with me in my relationship. Isn't that weird? That is so and to the extent that, like, somebody pointed out or recognized that you could make that, I was like, oh, yeah, that is kind of a funny coincidence you could make that link. At no point did I, did it occur to me until much later, oh, that was probably my FI, you know, putting itself into those lyrics uh, without me really being aware that's what I was doing, thinking that I was constructing what I, let me think of an S F E thing. Well, let me look at my SI reference points. Oh, well, there's this thought. And then not put two and two together. If it's in your SI, what's the SI of? Well, it must be SI of how you feel, Eric. All right? I don't know where else I would get, get that lyric from. Yep. Yeah. So before I go tonight, and this will be the, the last thing before I end the stream, I'm going to play What's the Big Problem? The best of my ability to play. This is a song that I have trouble playing because it's got kind of a weird rhythm to it. But I'll do the best I can with it. Yay. 
So, sir, basically, what's the easiest question for you to find out between INTJ and ENTJ? Oh, you're probably an ENTJ then. So ENTJs, if you're an ENTJ, you'll find it almost impossible to think back during the day and give an accounting of little events that have occurred from the beginning of the day to now of the following sort. I got up about 11 a.m. this morning and I peed. I, I heated up a cup of coffee because we had a pot of coffee from last night that was almost full but had gotten cold. And um, then I think I went into poo. Rachel was asleep on the floor. And then the cat, I think, was on the bed. And it's like little details like that, right? I pooed. It was, it was a medium poo. You know, I had to wipe some, but not a whole bunch. It wasn't like one of those legendary one one wipers. There's no zero wipers because you have to do one wipe to determine that you don't need to do any additional wipes. And the reality is nothing less than a two wiper because you're going to wipe again just to double check because it's so surprising when the first wipe doesn't reveal anything. See, that's an ancillary NI aside to my SI story, okay? But if you can do that kind of SI, all this random shit happened during the day, then you're not an ENTJ. If you can't do that, then you are. If as soon as I start doing that, your eyes glaze over, and when you try to do it, you go, well, usually I have a bagel for breakfast, you're probably an ENTJ. ENTJs and ENFJs are the only two types that I can give a fairly definitive answer to the question, what's one thing I can do to determine what type I am? If, well, if you really are an ENTJ, your SI polar is pretty, it's pretty glaring. Now, where's that other thing that I was looking at? This thing. Oh, right. I was going to play What's the Big Problem? All right. Bam, no. Oh, he came here with her. And what's the big problem that you can't enter? It seems so sure it's not appropriate claiming to blame things on Scott. Despite getting caught, he's got you refraining for him, straining for him, going to the gym to make yourself good enough again. that pretty well this time. I, I played that better than I usually do. I tend to have trouble playing that song. So uh, that was pleasing to me to have played it pretty well. So far, every ENTJ and ENFJ I met doesn't have an inner monologue. Maybe it's an SI polar thing. Might be. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know about that. Thanks, 3DR Nomad. I appreciate it. Um, with that, I think Rachel is just about asleep, and I'm feeling like, is this an example of SI? I woke up, brushed my teeth, showered, ate breakfast, work, had lunch at 11 a.m. After I played on phone, played for, played on my phone for a bit, browsed the internet. The only 
the real part of that is definitely SI sounding is the last bit. The stuff before, it sounds like you're doing a litany of what you always do every morning. So it's hard to it's hard to say. When you say after work, I played on my phone for a bit and then browsed the internet and was looking at this article on Mia, but then I saw this link within the article. I think that art that link and I started reading about Mia instead. That's SI. So like last night, how do I come up with the arrangement? I don't know. I just uh, I just start writing the song and I just brute force it basically. I just try every different chord until one of it sounds like it's what I want it to be like or something, you know. Uh, sometimes I've got a, a clear idea of where the melody is supposed to go and then I just have to find the chord that goes underneath it. And sometimes I have to create the melody and so I have to try a bunch of different things to see what goes from meow to meow, for example. Um, and until I find the right thing, and sometimes it takes a long ass time. Sometimes it doesn't. It's that's and I ignoring, you know, uh, everything's brute force for me artistically. Uh, utter self helped me earlier when he warned me. This is one of the better examples of demonstrative. He says he's an ENTP, I'll take him at his word, I'm not sure, but uh, he's definitely an NTP, I think. This is a, a, one of the more successful examples of demonstrative TE, if he is, in fact, an ENTP, when he told me, watch out, don't spend your, he didn't say exactly these words, but indicated to me, watch out, don't spend too much of your time turd polishing. And of course, that's my biggest problem when I'm recording music, is turd polishing. So, for example, earlier today, I recorded uh, some of the guitar part, I guess, most of the guitar part that I'm going to keep probably uh, done for recording the first song that I played, which is called So I'm So Sad or something like that. Um, I'm not sure if I wasted my time or not. Like, should I have, should I practice that thing more? Should I, should I do more takes until I get the perfect take so I have to do the least amount of editing? Or be okay with a less perfect take having to do a little bit more editing? Or... Uh, the fact is the error I tend to make is doing too much editing. If I do, a, if I make myself not be satisfied with the take until it's close to perfect magical kind of take, then I won't have to do the editing and it'll come out better in the long run. So what, well, yeah, what Legends Fall says here is a better take is best if you can get it. And so um, I found that that takeaway to be useful to me from utter self earlier. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, I didn't even know you were here, utter self, but uh, yeah, I found, well, that's the thing, but don't spend too much time polishing your turds. So in other words, you've got to keep the big picture in mind. In other words, don't be and I ignoring so much. Keep the big picture in mind. I'm trying to make a, I'm trying to get, a song, I'm trying to execute a recording of a song that I'm going to live with for a long time. Make sure I practiced playing it enough times before I even try to record it, you know? It is an important thing for me to remember and an easy thing for me to forget. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I've been host, Eric, and Rachel's been over there. And Rachel's sitting there with a cat right now. I can see her. Yes, oh. And the cat's been here with us as well. Oh. I'm a really breathy talker. <laughs> Sometimes people in the past have told me they were really breathy talker. Wow, that's so seductive. <laughs> I want everybody, I, I'm assigning homework tonight. Please, everybody work on your breathy talking. Next time we're going to all display how much better we've gotten at breathy talking. Because if you want to be seductive, doesn't matter what gender, what age, anything, you want to be seductive, what's always going to do somebody is breathy talk. The more breath per word, the better. 
Hi. My name is Sylvia. <laughs> it's extremely seductive. All right. Goodbye, everybody. I am so silly. <laughs>